Please listen carefully. Well, hello, universe, and welcome to the Optimist Daily Update. I'm Christy Jansen. And I'm Summers McKay. And we're part of the team behind the Optimist Daily, making solutions the news. We bring you reader-funded solutions news every day in order to change the tenor of news media, social media, and the direction of your day to one focused on solutions. Seven days a week, we publish positive news stories written by award-winning journalists and delivered online to your inbox and through our social channels. And also, we are sharing these solutions in a commute-worthy, walk-worthy, home office-worthy podcast. Today is Wednesday, the 11th of November, 2020. So today is Veterans Day, Christy. It is, and it's also my mother's birthday. Oh, what a special day. Well, happy birthday to your mom. That's pretty special. And, you know, today is a day where we honor all of those who have served in the armed forces. You know, my kiddo does not have school today, my, our, our high schooler. And uh, it's just a special day. How will you celebrate your mother? Is there anything you want to share about your mom that we can uh, well, say happy the birthday? I, I, the reason I brought that up, and it's funny because it is Veterans Day, but I did visit with her uh, socially distant, of course, uh, yesterday. And she gave me a book that she had compiled, which has images and pictures and sort of the story of her young life and her ancestors and my father's is sort of a compilation of both sides of my family. So it was sort of interesting because I got to see pictures of my great, great grandfathers on both sides um, oh, how and, cool. and others back from the like early 1900s. And even before that, <laughs> apparently one of them came over from Scotland and uh, served in the Civil War on the side of the North. And another one of my ancestors was on the South. So it was sort of this interesting, like very American story, I suppose. Yeah, that's <laughs> a bad time. Anyway, it just, it's been fun. It's been interesting. I haven't really dug that deeply into it yet, but I was looking at it last night and uh, it's sort of neat. Yeah. Well, is your mom really connected to her history? How did she have this book? Was this something she had had made or how did it come together? I think probably what it is, is that she's collected these things from her side. And then when my father's mother passed on, I think she inherited those images from my father's side. My father Ah. has been dead for a couple decades now. So she has collected all this information and uh, full disclosure, my mother's family were Mormons. So there's a lot of historical and genealogical data in there from Mormon church as well. That's really valuable information to have. Certainly the record keeping, you know, that's churches are how record keeping was made for Mm -hmm. many, many years before individuals were doing the work themselves. So that's really what a fun thing to learn about your history. Which is interesting, you know, and I my heritage from Scotland and then from Denmark as well. My great-grandmother, who I'm named for, was from Denmark. So, yeah. Have you ever done one of the DNA tests? Yes, I have. And I'm a Northern European mutt. <laughs> <laughs> I find those tests to be really fascinating. I did all of them kind of at the outset. And then I had this unintended consequence where some of them sold the data to other organizations. And somebody in my biological family reached out to me because they had found that we were a match on a site that I had never even uploaded my data to, but had instead purchased the data from one of the originals, not 23andMe, but a different one. So it's very fascinating. Once the data is out there, it's out there. So I'm fine with information ubiquity. I think it's very valuable. And I think it's fun to know where we came from. Really, we're all just one big human family. Exactly. Well, speaking of one big human family... Um, where are we going on the Optimist Daily today, my dear? (laughs) Well, it has nothing to do with families, I don't think. (laughs) The story I wanted to highlight today actually talks about the Virgin Hyperloop. The headline reads, Virgin Hyperloop completes first test run with passengers aboard. And what a Hyperloop is, is it's a, a way of travel using magnetically levitating pods that propel people through near vacuum tubes, which means that there's so little resistance that these pods can travel at super high speeds. They can eventually hit around 475 miles per hour, which means that you can travel from Los Angeles to San Francisco in only 30 minutes if you were on a Hyperloop. And this is just like, 
Whoa, it's mind blowing science fiction, which, you know, I love. So this is a technology which is currently being developed in Virgin Hyperloop is the first company that is really bringing it towards commercial use. And so just this last week, is Virgin this the Hyperloop. same Virgin that's Richard Branson Virgin? It's all the same? No, I, I don't actually know. That's a good question. And I didn't dig into the story, but probably it's somewhat connected. I can't answer that question right wait, here. Wait, let me Google it. Let me Google it really quick. Okay. Let me look at Yes, yeah. it has well, Virgin I'm Hyperloop has yeah. the same logo. So it's definitely okay. part of the definitely Branson connected Empire. To Virgin. Which is interesting because they are a very interesting and forward-looking company in general. Yeah. But this is a the next step on the planet transportation, right? <laughs> it's not going into space, but it's using space age technology to move people around in their cities and in our communities. And this is a milestone because they're now testing the first ever human passengers for a short run. So Virgin Hyperloop co-founder and CTO Josh Geigel and director of passenger experience Sarah Lukian were the first humans to hop aboard with this test run. And it took them only to speeds of about 172 kilometers per hour, which is 107 miles per hour. But they're just testing that the pods are comfortable and fine for, for human travel. And it was a successful test. It's just sort of fun. It's in the process of being developed. There's a lot of work that's still going on eventually it will be able to travel safely at the speed of sound and it's trying to get to the place where it can achieve safety certification by 2025 and have a commercial service up and running by 2030 which isn't really that far away i was gonna say that's not that far away that is Um, like you know junior high and high school far away (laughs) that's eight years (laughs) the other thing that's really interesting about this is if you think about it if we can travel from san francisco to Los Angeles and back in 30 minutes, it's much greener than air travel, right? And so it's really, it's changing what proximity looks like and changing Mm -hmm. the world of work. And, you know, really this kind of transportation actually, I believe will accelerate the work from home option because you can work anywhere in the world from your home. And it's not, you know, our ability to have professional experiences doesn't require that we live in these very high cost cities or that certainly San Francisco is having a huge issue with how high cost it is. And and people are just leaving the city because it's just you don't need to be in the city to work in the city anymore. So right. it, it's just continuing to change the way our communities and metropolises work together. Yeah. So it's anyway, it's just a fun story. And yes, it's very futuristic and it's far out there, but we want to be following it. And I just like the idea of jumping onto a Hyperloop pod and being in San Francisco for lunch. Right, right. We could just zip up there for lunch once we're all socially distanced with Matt. We could go back to being in a, having yeah. lunch together. <laughs> I, but I, I assume by the time this is live and in action, there will be some sort of different way that we interact with one another. Well, I guess in civic development, and this kind of like is similar to the story that I talked about yesterday and is right along in the transportation theme. The port city of Sunderland will host the UK's first carbon neutral community. Now, we talk all the time about how solutions aren't siloed, and it's imperative that you look at housing, transportation, and energy systems together in a unit in order to reduce our greenhouse gases and emissions and improve our climate crisis. So that's what they're doing in Sunderland, which is a city located in North England, Basically, as part of an eco-friendly master plan designed by architects Faulkner Browns and Proctor and Matthews, Sunderland will soon welcome a huge riverside regeneration project that will transform a 33.2 hectare acre site on both sides of the River Ware in the country's first carbon neutral urban quarter. From this project, there's going to be a thousand energy efficient homes, four mixed use residential neighborhoods, and a community for a total of 2,500 people. What is really fascinating is that they're building not only the green spaces, the residential spaces, they're also building a community, an art center, and it'll be a live work community with smart renewable energy. So I love seeing these little cities, little test environments getting created, and 2,500 people is a pretty darn good test. I think if you had Sunderland Hyperloop to London, so you could head out to have a, you know, quick lunch in London, that sounds like exactly the future that we all want. Yeah, I don't know. So. Transatlantic Hyperloop, is that is that even possible? I'd have to do more research on that one. But 
curious well, idea. No, this, isn't, this isn't Sunderland is in North England, so they could zip down to London. It's not that far. <laughs> okay. Yes. Well, I was imagining I, coming from our side of the pond over oh, to over to London. Well, you know, the channel, <laughs> the channel is real, right? That yeah. works. So let's hyperloop the channel and we'll be in France and we can all enjoy French stew like I made yesterday. So. All right. Well, this this conversation is just going off the rails. Summers, and I, I have can to be you going. tell I just want to travel. All I am thinking about is how to hyperloop myself to somewhere adventurous. I am so ready for adventure, but that's because it's hump day and it's midweek, and we're ready to turn the corner on this next week. And as we do that, what are some other headlines on the Optimist Daily today, Christy? Well, okay, so there's an article about three more ways to be more decisive in your decision making, right? How do you how do you make the decisions that we need to keep things going? There's some easy design ideas to make the most of a small home. That's really important as our homes, even large homes, are starting to feel small. Yeah. <laughs> Second, how your body and mind can both benefit from dark chocolate. Oh, that's a nice idea. Mm-hmm. And after- red wine and dark chocolate. We need to have the follow up red wine article on this one. Red too. wine. And then throw some coffee in there too. And we're exactly. all happy. <laughs> <laughs> and then after years of rehabilitation, some manatees are returning to the ocean. Those are just a few of the other headlines on the Optimist Daily Today. Jump on the website and check those out. And thanks everybody for listening to the Optimist Daily Update. We promise to continue to share these kinds of positive solution-based stories with ideas on how you can participate in this changing world and ensure it's changed for the good. We promise to cover current events with accuracy, legitimate sources, and offer you the information needed most to chart new paths for all of us. Please consider becoming an emissary on theoptimistdaily.com and for just $5 a month, support reader-funded independent journalism. Be part of the solution changing consciousness and addressing our world's biggest challenges with a problem-solving mindset. Let's keep the Optimist Daily free to all who need it, supported by those who can. Thanks, everybody. Have a great hump day, and we will see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.